Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at Dell's Alienware Alpha R2, which is more comparable to a Mac Mini, but we're going to compare it against the late 2013 Mac Pro. Taking a look at some of the front ports, we have two USB 3 super speed, and the Alienware logo is also the power button. Moving along to the back, we have an Alienware graphics amplifier port, which we'll be taking a look at in our next video. HDMI in and out, gigabit ethernet, and another two USB 3 super speed ports, and SPD IF audio out. If we take a look at the size, it's only 55 millimeters high. And then if we look at it from the top, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect square, 200 millimeters each side. And here I've put it up against the new RX 480, so you can get an idea of just how small it is and a full-size GPU is actually bigger than it. So looking at the specs compared to the two we're gonna compare, that we've got the dual Alienware Alpha R2. Uh, it's rocking a 6700 Ti7 at 2.8 gigahertz. It's got 16 gigabytes of 2133 megahertz DDR4 memory and it's running an NVIDIA GDX 960 M4 gigabyte. And storage-wise, it's got a 256 gigabyte PCIe NVMe SSD. Now onto the Mac Pro that we tested against. It's running an E5 1620 V2. It's a 3.7 gigahertz four core eight thread. It's got 12 gigabytes of 1866 megahertz DDR3, and it's rocking dual AMD D300 two gigabyte cards and the standard 256 PCIe AHCI SSD. I guess the biggest difference now is the price, whereas the Dell Alienware is at $14.99 and then the Mac Pro is at $48.99. Um, that's three Dell Alienware units if you haven't realized. Okay, jumping straight into some CPU benchmarks, Geekbench 4 single, uh, we had the Alienware edge out the Mac Pro here with a score of 4008 and the Mac Pro at 3888. Uh, running Geekbench Multi, we had the Mac Pro just edge out the Alienware here with a 12,778 and the Alienware at 12,291, very small margins. Uh, Cinebench R15, uh, single core performance, we had the Alienware edge of that out at 144 and the Mac Pro at 136. And then running the Multi test, we had the Alienware win this one by 22 points at 672 for the Alienware and 651 for the Mac Pro. Looking at these graphs, I would say they're pretty much on par with each other. Now onto some synthetic GPU benchmarking. Geekbench 4 running the CUDA test. We had the Alienware here do it at 72606, and the Mac Pro obviously can't run that. But running the OpenCL, we ha had the Alienware edge out 1D300 here, with a score of 75668, and the Mac Pro at 67330. Running Luxmark, uh, take into account that the Mac Pro has two graphics cards in these tests. Uh, the Alienware at 1640, and the Mac Pro at 2615. Luxmark 3 Luxpore scene, uh, the Drew D300 Mac Pro here at 13,604, and the Alienware at 6,065. Cinebench R15 in the OpenGL test, we had the Alienware do it at 110 frames per second, the Mac Pro hitting 75 frames. A Convue bench, it's running a video composition test, the Mac Pro here with the Drew D300 scoring 74 frames, whilst the Alienware doing 52 frames per second. GPU test, this is definitely uh, leaning towards CUDA here, and we had the Alienware do it at 9870, whilst the Mac Pro do it at 4156. Jumping into DaVinci Resolve for the candlelight benchmark, we had both machines running uh, running smoothly on a 1080p timeline at 25 frames per second. Throwing 10 blur nodes on, we had the Alienware at 16 frames, and the Mac Pro held tight at 25 frames. Onto 20 blur nodes, we here we see uh, the Alienware at 12 frames, whilst the Mac Pro at 20 frames. Uh, 40 blue nodes, the Alien we drop into eight frames whilst the Mac Pro at 14 frames. Uh, and then 60 blue nodes, we had the Mac Pro at 10 frames and the Alien we're half at five frames per second. Once again, this is dual D300 versus one GDX 960M. Uh, going on to the two TNR nodes, here we definitely see uh, the CUDA keeping up with the dual D300s and the score was identical for all three tests. So uh, two blue nodes, it was 13 frames, four blue nodes was seven frames and six blue nodes was five frames. Last but not least, some real world benchmarks. Uh, here we took DaVinci Resolve, it's a 2 minute red 4K file, exporting it to H.264 uh, with heaps of effects. Uh, here we see the Alienware do it in a minute and 7 seconds and the Mac Pro here at 3 minutes and 8 seconds. 
Premiere Pro here. It's a great effects and then an export of a two minute ProRes 4K file to H.264 1080p. And we had the Alienware Alpha do it at five minutes and 16 seconds and the Mac Pro here at six minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, now taking a large file, it's a DaVinci, in DaVinci Resolve, grade effects, lots of nodes and an export. It's a three minute red 6K file and we're exporting this to UHD H.264. Uh, both sort of evened out there with uh, the Alien, we're doing it at 13 minutes and six seconds and the Mac Pro at 13 minutes and 25 seconds. Running the Photoshop benchmark now, uh, it's an open seal action that we created. It's running on a 20 megapixel image and we have the Alienware Alpha just edge out the Mac Pro at one minute and 52 seconds, whilst the Mac Pro here at two minutes and 16 seconds. Why anyone would buy a Mac Pro at this stage, I don't know. Given it is three years old and we just watched a, a $1,500 mini PC uh, keep up with it um, and Apple's pricing structure of not dropping the price at all is, is painful. Um, I feel Apple's sort of abandoned the workstation market um, and they need to do something fast to hold on to the remaining users who are holding on by you know a thin thread or at least advise the users that you know they, they are going to discontinue the Mac Pro so everyone can move on and uh, not whinge as much on the forums but uh, I, uh speaking of the forums i did say a really cool concept done by a user on mac rumors um, i posted about it on my blog so i'll put a link in the description um, you should check it out and i'll put a quick photo up uh, in the top corner now but uh if you liked what you saw uh like this subscribe dislike uh, let me know why you disliked it uh, either way thanks for watching